We're going to be talking tonight about a very heavy issue. I want to say viewer discretion is advised, but I think there is a lot of young people that need to be exposed to what we're going to talk about tonight that are that need to break free from this. The devil has assaulted our generation with lust, and I can't think of four better guys to do this than guys that are leaders, pastors, preachers, and really we know this has taken out a lot of our colleagues. This has taken out a lot of other ministers. We all know guys that at one point we're doing exactly what we're doing. We're preaching the word of God. We're bold for God, was preaching against the spirit and have been taken down by this spirit. The devil has assassinated them through the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of perversion, the spirit of lust, and just the natural proclivities of the flesh. And so we want to discuss some of these things. Guys, we're going to try to do this in a conversational format. There is a delay on Discord, so it's kind of hard for us to have conversation when there is a pretty big delay, but we're going to do the best that we could. I kind of want to intro this thing off on why this is such a major issue, not just for unbelievers, but many mm -hmm. of you in the chat, there's 3,000 on right now with all of our pages. And there's many people listening right now, not just males, but females that are dealing with lust. And I believe tonight, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the anointing of God, I just want to prophesy there's going to be freedom from every unclean spirit of lust. Every person that's dealing with the battle of their flesh tonight, we are going to tell our flesh to shut up. We are going to crucify our flesh. In Jesus' mm -hmm. name, we're going to equip you guys with scripture to overcome the flesh, and there's going to be freedom. I was, I'm just going to start with my own story, addicted to pornography from the ages of 12 to 19. And I'm telling you, if God can deliver me, I do believe God can deliver you. This is a major battle. It's something that many pastors and leaders don't want to talk about, but we need to talk about this. We need to target this. And I believe tonight many of you are going to get free. And I just want to put my first scripture up to show you guys the seriousness of the sin. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine says, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral will not inherit the kingdom of God. How serious is this tonight? It's so serious that Paul says those that are sexually immoral will not inherit the kingdom of God. And so mm -hmm. I want to start out very strong by saying your eternity is at stake, beloved. You, this is not a game. This is not a joke. This is the, one of the heaviest issues we can talk about because the Bible says if you're sexually immoral, if you're in fornication, if you're watching pornography, if you're lusting on women, if you're committing adultery, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. And so, man, this is a strong issue. It's major. I think, guys, tonight is so powerful that we talk about it. I was freed from this. God delivered me from me. This is just my personal story. You guys can call me what you want in the comments or make Heresy 100 videos about me. I actually got delivered several days after being saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. My life was changed radically. I was undeniably saved. I started getting extremely perverted thoughts and I, I was so bad that I knew it wasn't me. I'm like, I'm, this isn't me. I don't want these thoughts. I'm a changed person. I'm looking at people different. I'm born again. Everything's different, but I kept hearing a voice and I kept seeing images of just stuff. I wouldn't mention on a live stream stuff. I never even was involved with. I was never mm. even involved in how, how perverted this was. And then I realized, no, this is a demonic spirit in me. And I ended up several days after getting saved, getting delivered from a spirit of shame, a spirit of perversion and a spirit of lust. And I'm standing here 12 years later. I'm not trying to brag. I'm only boasting in God. I have not gone back to pornography. I have not gone back to lust. I've not gone back to any of it. I've been 12 years free from internet pornography. Again, addicted from the age of 12 to 19 completely free. I have not fallen into sexual sin whatsoever. When I look at people, I can look at them right in the eye. I'm not struggling when someone jogs by and I'm driving. I've been walking in holiness and purity. And I do believe for me, it was supernatural. For others of you, it could be a sin of the flesh, which we'll talk about tonight. But I just wanted to start by sharing that um, there was freedom for me. Do you guys have any story of freedom or any intro you want to give of, of your, your overcoming this in your own life? Well, my story is a little bit different. Um, I ended up becoming addicted to sexual perversion as a pastor of a mm. church during uh, the era when the digital age first hit the church. I've been pastoring mm. for 20 years. So prior to that, there was no cell phones or internet. Um, in order for a person to um, look at pornography, you had to go to the local grocery store um, or a porno shop, which um, kind of still exists to this day. 
Um, but when the internet and when cell phones became readily available to the average average person, um, the, the spiritual climate of our church and my life changed dramatically because now I didn't have to go out and be sneaky about it. Now I could just go mm. to the stall in the bathroom mm. in my job and literally have a, a field day with it. So um, what started off as members, men of my church um, getting addicted to pornography ended up creeping up into my life. Now, I wasn't like addicted every day, like an extreme uh, addiction to it, but I did have what I would call binges, which means I was fine mm -hmm. for like a couple months. And then I had a moment where I was weak. And then when I uh, was weak, then I'd binge for like two, three days and then go through this cycle of of repentance and fasting and prayer and rededication uh, to Christ. It wasn't until I embraced uh, the ministry of deliverance. Come on. And I got absolutely radically set free, and I've been Ooh. free since. And I could say the same thing like you, Isaiah. And I know that when we say things like that, people think you're being prideful or boastful. You can live lust free. Say Those it. of you that watch, yes, it. you can. Yeah. You don't have to give in to the proclivities and the lustfulness of the eyes and the flesh. There is a moment where you can walk in such a connection with the Word of God, submission to the Word of God, and to the Holy Spirit that you don't have to be consistently always saying, Lord, control my mind. Lord, control my thoughts. Control my eyes. Mm -hmm. You can be consistently saturated with um, being God conscious or practicing the presence of God. So when I got set free through the ministry of deliverance, then that's around the time where I, I dedicated my life to not just preach the gospel, but secondarily teach the ministry of deliverance to help set the Ooh. captives free. And we, that's one demon that I can say, if you're watching, you can get set free from Come sexual on. perversion. We Come by on. far has had the most success in this particular area in the ministry of deliverance than by far any other demon that we are seeing. Why? Because it flows down from the head. So that's my story, Isaiah, and those of you that are watching is that I myself uh, got set free and we've been pushing uh, this revelation of deliverance to, uh, to help others get set free from sexual perversion within the clergy, within the clergy. You know, Apostle mm -hmm. Pagani, as you're saying that, there's pastors in the chat right now. We have almost 5,000 people on here. There's pastors in the chat right now that are going through exactly what you went went through and I believe tonight you're going to get set free if you are a pastor or a leader there is an anointing tonight to break the back of lust to break the back of perversion and I want to before I pass it to Vlad I want to just touch on something Pagani that you said it's you don't have to struggle your whole life there's so right. many pastors that say we're all just going to always struggle no that is not God's will for your life. That is not God's plan that you're going to live the rest of your life struggling with this, having thoughts about it, having desires about it. That is a lie from the devil. Jesus can and wants to set you free. And he whom the Son sets free, the Bible says, is free indeed. So there is freedom. Embrace the freedom. I, I was at a point where I said, I'll do anything to get free from this. And so don't shrink back tonight. Don't say, I'll get free later. It's normal. It's not normal. Show me in the Bible where God says it's normal to live your whole entire life lusting. It's normal to live your whole entire life addicted. No, it's not. I believe tonight in Jesus' name, those perverted thoughts are going to go. Those perverted desires are going to go. Those unclean spirits are going to leave in Jesus' name. We put every spirit of lust on notice. We put every spirit of perversion on notice. You will not remain. You will leave this house tonight. In Jesus' name. And so we're not going to forget at the end to pray a prayer of deliverance. Lord. Again, I want to also say this, and then I'm going to turn over to Vlad. All four of us here, I'm going to speak for all four of us. I don't do this often, but I'm going to say this. We don't believe everything's a demon. We don't believe that lust is always a demon. We do believe right. there are sins of the flesh. There is temptations yeah. of the flesh that we need to overcome with prayer, with fasting, with the word of God. But we're telling you our personal story. We got deliverance from this. So we don't want to just credit deliverance. We don't want to downplay it. Not everything is a demon. You might be struggling right now, and it might not be a demon. But if it is a demon, we're going to cast it out. And if it's not, we're going to pray. We're going to fast. We're going to get involved in our local church. We're going to get into discipleship. We're going to get in worship. And we will distinguish in a little bit here what are the differences, how to know. But I just wanted to make that clear is we don't believe everything's a demon. We don't believe lust is always a demon. But for me and Pagani, it was. And we got deliverance from that. Vlad, did you have a story? Did you ever deal with um, lust? Was this a stronghold for you ever? Yes. Yeah, so same. Uh, I would relate with the same uh, story that uh, Apostle Pagani shared and uh, Isaiah, you shared. Um, I was exposed to pornography when I was in the Ukraine. I was about, I think, 11 years of age. 
uh that was the first time somebody brought some black and white uh paper um with women not having clothes and honestly it didn't hit me until later and i just brought it home I was hiding between my books so my parents will never see it and then of course i burned it because i was like I, I was afraid of getting caught but we didn't have any access to television even in the ukraine because my parents kind of were protecting the family from the influences of the world so we come to the united states i'm 13 and 13 years of age and then 13 and a half um, i'm babysitting like seven cats of my neighbor the guy had like more cats than uh i mean it was a lot of cats we just were here and in the United States and he lets us babysit them for seven days. And this is where it happened for me is that um, I stumbled upon the VHS tapes. It was not even mine. It was in his house. And and I remember like something entered me. Mm. But at that time, I didn't connect that to being a demon. I just thought that like these cravings of my flesh woke up. And so, of course, you know, with it came shame. I said, I will never do it again. I felt dirty, guilty. I repented that night only to do it again the next day because the owner didn't come back and I had seven cats to feed and he had more VHS tapes. And the next day I did it again. And, you know, again, shame, repentance, da 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 da, da. And then the next day I did it again. And then I was looking, my only hope was now that the owner will come and take away the keys because I lost control. You know, and I couldn't connect that. I mean, I was 13 years of age. I wasn't exposed to the ministry of deliverance that one of the signs that you have an unclean spirit controlling you is that you no longer can control yourself. And so, of course, I applied discipline. After that, I decided no more. I think I went for like three months and then it would find me. And like Pagani shared, like I couldn't find it because in order to go to the store, I didn't even have a license at the time. We had no internet in the house. We had no magazines in the house. It would find me mm. in school. It would find me in a Christian bookstore, in a Christian bookshelf. Yeah. I remember I opened a book. It wasn't Christian book, but in a Christian bookshelf. And there was pornography inside. I dropped the book and ran. And I was like, what's happening to me? I almost felt like I was a marked man. And this was the time I was already preaching at the church as a young teenager. My pastor was kind of entrusting me to, to ministers as a young guy, raising me up. And, and I've done kind of the discipline part, fasting every week, then every month, three days, and disciplining myself. I didn't do the renouncing part, just more repentance, shame, repentance, and the whole cycle. Until it was actually Jack Hayford's book about something about sexuality, where mm. he shared a story of one of the pastors who had a similar problem that reoccurred years later. And Jack Hayford, through the word of knowledge, leads the pastor that there's an open door and the demons still have access and he needs to get delivered. And it's like a light went on in my mind. Oh wow. my goodness. This little Christian boy might have a demon problem. Because see, in my mind, demon problem people were those people. It just mm. can't be me. And my issue was uh, justified, domesticated. I rationalized it. I was like, no, I just need to try harder. And so um, the light went on and I remember I went for actually for a seven day water fast. But this time it was not fasting to defeat the flesh. I went to war because I Come went to on. my pastor. He prayed for me. And so it was like the whole seven days, it was just renouncing anything I could think of. The Lord was highlighting different things. And now I didn't necessarily yell, scream, vomit, but I did feel during that time, something just left the same way that I felt something enter me. I felt something like just just exited me. And um, I thought maybe it was just like the fasting. But the change that happened is right after that, the temptations would be there. But it's almost like I had control back. I was in control, not the lust or the flesh was in control. And I was able to walk away and, and live in that freedom. And so, and I've been living in that freedom since, and it's been an incredible journey. And so then seeing that, and it's interesting, Pagani mentioned that. When we took our team to Africa, to the ministry of one minister who practices deliverance, one of the first things that happened with almost half of my team is they all start getting delivered from the spirit of lust. And now mm. this team is our pastoral team who are walking in that freedom, bringing deliverance to others. So I can testify that yes, it's a flesh issue that we need to crucify, but also if we give it enough foothold, especially if there are generational curses or traumas, for some people, it's no longer just the flesh. Give flesh enough 
space and enough time, feed it enough, and it will gain a foothold for a demon to come in and now begin to control your life. And without deliverance, you will not be able to overcome that flesh. That's so good. And I think what people don't realize, Vlad, is that the flesh and demons work together. The demons entice your flesh. They throw gas on your yeah. flesh. And these things are working together. They're not separate from each other, but they actually work together. Once you remove that demon, I love what you said, you're able to get that flesh under subjection, under control, and get it crucified. So you're not living your life constantly struggling like there's something wanting to do this when you don't want to do it. Mike, do you have any story of freedom? I'm going to just, just yeah, jump on that. What you just said, somebody said that flesh is a traitor within who is in a relationship with the demons without. Mm. Though flesh is not a demon, but if the moment you give it too much foothold, it right away makes a place for a demon. It calls them at your weakest moment. And then, like you said, it opens the door to those demons. That's a good, that's a good word. It's so good. This conversation is so needed, you know, and there's a level of vulnerability that each one of you guys are showing that is rare. And that in and of itself is healing to many people mm -hmm. watching right now because you don't hear pastors talk this with this level of transparency. Matter of fact, the only time a lead pastor gets this vulnerable is after they get caught. Come and, on. and all the details come out. So this has been very refreshing. I, I can't say names. But guys, I've told some of the most prominent pastors in America that they needed deliverance. They told me it was only a flesh problem. And unfortunately, their entire ministry doesn't exist anymore. And some of them, it was worse than that. So you know, I think it's easy to laugh at, you know, oh, it, they, these guys think it's a demon. Oh, it's easy to give the blame to the demon. It's like, no, listen, like if you're opening up the door through carnality and we said this many many times right now i'm in london and the front door of this flat's open if i leave it open long enough it, it something's going to enter it might not happen instantaneously but it will happen wow. over time i'm gonna i'm gonna take it a different angle though so 15 years ago many of you guys know that i had incrementally slipped into alcoholism and so my problem wasn't necessarily pornography but it was those real life interactions with women and, I, and I, I know there's many people watching right now that alcohol is playing a part Come and it's on. a key component to your sexual sin. There's many, many things that as soon as I stopped drinking, those mm -hmm. other things were abated because wow. when you drink, you shut down the frontal lobe of your brain. And I, I remember getting drunk enough to a certain point where I said, now I'll fulfill that secret in inward desire. Now I'm willing. Now, you know, they call wow. alcohol liquid courage courage because mm -hmm. you'll say and so for me it was like alcohol was actually the conduit or the gateway for all the other stuff so there's many people watch me right now that the sober version of you would never do it come on wow. but the drunk version of you will do it and so i just want to say and there's past and this is what i'm saying there's a lot of pastors but i wanted to just say this off the jump because i was studying for this and there's at least five consequences of lust that are outlined in scripture. And it's important to understand the consequences because a lot of times when you're trapped in lust, you're thinking the only consequence is I get caught or I feel mm. bad. But if you, I, I just want to give five briefly. Number one is separation from God's presence. Mm. If you look at Isaiah 59, two, it says, but your iniquities have made a separation between you and God and your sins have hidden his face from you. Uh, number two is guilt and shame. And there's just a layer of guilt and shame that you live with. If you look at Genesis chapter three, verse eight, it's like they heard the sound of God walking in the garden and they, they hid themselves. And so, so many of you are living with that constant guilt and shame. Number three is actual broken relationships. Lust can produce broken relationships. I was looking at Matthew 15, 19. It says, for out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and slander. So when you see lustful behavior, you also see it damages relationships in every direction. Number four is a loss of spiritual and emotional fulfillment. So when you're trapped in lust, one of the consequences is you will feel a loss of spiritual and emotional fulfillment. That's Hosea chapter two, verse eight. It says, for she does not know that it was I who gave her grain, the wine and the oil and who lavished on her silver and gold, which they use for bail. Mm -hmm. And so the scriptures basically saying that there, they, there couldn't even be satisfaction 
action in the good things that God gave because there was a, a lustful desire that was being fulfilled. And then the last one is lust impairs your judgment and your wisdom. That's the consequence of it. Uh, Proverbs chapter five, verse three and four says, for the lips of a forbidden woman drip honey and her speech is smoother than oil, but in the end she's bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. And so lust will literally rob you of your decision-making and you will become unwise. So for those of you who are like, what's the big deal? You know, I'm just going to keep doing it. I just gave you five, at least five biblical consequences to let the gravity of this broadcast really settle on you. Mm. It, you know, it should, it should be. Man, tonight's going to be the last night. Today's going to be the Come last on. day I ever deal with this. Mm. Yeah, and I want to get to that point of breaking the sin cycle. I want to give you guys a few statistics. Forty. These are these are a little bit dated, so it's worse than this. But they say forty million Americans are are regularly visiting porn sites. Thirty five percent of every download online. Listen to this. 35% of every download online is internet pornography. One out of every, one in five mobile search. So when you're searching on your phone on Google is related to pornography. Pornography is now over a hundred billion dollar industry. That's more than the NFL, the NBA, the MLB, and the NHL combined. Over 40 million, oh, I said that 40 million, 28,000 users are watching every second. 70 plus percent of teenagers hide their behavior from their parents, their online behavior. 70% of men, 18 to 24, watch pornography at least once a month. And Sunday is the most popular day of the week to watch internet pornography. Guys, this is a pandemic. This is an epidemic happening right now that is robbing destinies, that is dragging people to hell, that is not a light issue. And one thing I wanted to touch on that you guys mentioned earlier is, here's the reason. Oh, wrong camera. Here's the reason. This is the gateway to hell right here. This is the vehicle that the devil's driving. And the devil used to have a 30 horsepower, you know, uh, station wagon. Now he has a thousand horsepower Tesla as his vehicle yeah. to release pornography on a generation. Literally, the devil's releasing, releasing these spirits, releasing pornography on an entire generation. I, in some of our services, it blows my mind that there is five-year-olds, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, yeah. eight-year-olds coming up saying, I need prayer. Oh, what do you need prayer for? These are little children. What do you need prayer for? Oh, I'm watching pornography on my iPad. I had a little boy that was seven years old come up asking for prayer with his parents. And I'm like, what do you need prayer for? And he said, I'm seven years old. I'm watching pornography every morning for multiple hours on my iPad before my parents get up for work. I watch it at night. Seven year old. These are children that are being addict, that are now addicted, as, as you were saying, Pagani and Vlad. We had to get magazines. When I was young, we didn't have the internet like that. We didn't have smartphones. There was no such thing. I had a magazine at a neighbor's house I had to go find and look at. And now an entire generation is on TikTok and TikTok is full of soft pornography. And some of it's not even soft. You know, a lot yeah. of these videos before they're banned are straight pornography. And you have parents and there's 6,000 of you watching. Your children, I'm just gonna say it bold, should not be on TikTok. Your children mm -hmm. should not be yeah. scrolling on YouTube. What are you guys doing out here? Letting your kids on Reddit, on TikTok, on the Instagram Explore page. The devil is literally l launching all out of salt. And one of the lies he gives is this. You struggle for three months and then you get free for three months. You struggle for two weeks and then you're free for two weeks. And the devil, all he's doing is lengthening your chain. You're still in bondage. Yeah. It's just... A month goes by, three months go by. Guys, if your six months go by and then you fall again, your chain is just longer. You're not free. Tonight, God wants to set you free. Complete freedom. Never going back. Never doing it again. And one of the responsibilities as parents we have to take is we're not being good guards. We're not guarding our household properly. Come on, men in the chat. Where are you guys? Why are you not worried about what your kids are watching, what your kids are listening to. I'm constantly checking any of my kids' devices, monitoring what they're doing, and if you turn a blind eye, you will allow Jezebel in your home. You'll allow the spirit in your home. And some of you in the yeah. chat are saying, why don't pastors preach on this? Because they're watching it. They're doing it. They're involved in it. So why would the pastor preach on it and expose themselves? So this is a major issue. It's the accessibility. It's a hidden battle. It's this lengthening chain. Why do you guys think right now, like never before, any other thoughts about this uh, assault on our generation? You know, Revelation chapter one, um, 
and two and three talks about the seven church ages. And we know that those two chapters are dedicated to uh, specific churches and pastors and churches. But um, I think it, it can also relate to homes as well. Mm. Uh, the church of Ephesus says the Lord Jesus was praising them and said, you guys are good at rebuking what's evil. You guys are good at finding what's wicked. You guys are good at finding what's false. But I have an issue with you. You still allow that Jezebel to Come teach. On. Yeah. You still, you still. So we're great at guarding our children from false doctrine. We're great at uh, guarding them from the cares of this mm. world. But then again, um, we find that Jezebel is uh, teaching through their phones, through their video yeah. games, through their peers, through That's the people that word. we don't really guard who they're connected to. Um, so yeah, I think at this at this point we have to uh, be mindful um, that uh, we have to be a little bit more vigilant. We have to be a little bit more vigilant, regardless. And, and let me just say this to every parent: um, regardless of their complaints, you're still their parent, and it's still your house. Come on. You know. Mm -hmm. Fight against it. Fight against it, regardless of the complaints. Complaining now, they'll love you later. They'll praise you later that you got it. Them I want to so just good. take a moment and define a little bit of why lust is wrong. Uh, biblically, like we already have heard that it's it's a sin. I think it was C.S. Lewis that shared an example. He said that if you put dirt in your um, flower pot, then it becomes soil. You take this soil from the flower pot and you put it into your salad, it becomes dirt. The same type of uh, material in a different content, in a different context, what begins to happen is it becomes dirty. And that's one of the reasons what we must understand is that lust is really the, the original work from the Greek. It actually comes from the word thermostat, meaning that the idea combines the temperature that could rise being unbridled, calling for some means to regulate and direct the passion toward proper investments rather than the carnal ones. Lust is not a result of overactive sex drive. It's not a biological phenomenon. Otherwise, a sexual experience will satisfy that. Like a glass of water quenches the thirst and a good meal, you know, it satisfies your appetite. Lust, when it comes to love, Lust to the gift of sex and to the gift of love is like cancer to the normal cell. It's mm. really something that is sent by hell itself to destroy not only your purity, to destroy your relationships, like Pastor Mike mentioned, to destroy your relationship with God and everything else. It's really craving sexually what God has forbidden. Lust goes beyond the attraction, appreciation of beauty and healthy even desire for sex. It makes something that these desires are more important than God and it goes outside of God's guidelines to find this satisfaction. The story that I'm kind of reminded of Samson when they wanted to take Samson out and one of the ways they wanted to take Samson out is through Delilah. And the Bible says when Delilah was putting him to sleep, trying to find that secret, the Philistines were hiding behind the couch or somewhere in the other room where they were pretty much in that, in that house paying her because she was sponsored by these Philistines to try to take his eyes, take his anointing and his ministry and pretty much cause a public scandal and his public defeat. And I really believe that Delilah is that lust. It's that pornography. It's sponsored by the devil himself. The, the, it's on the Come payroll on. of every demon, every agenda of hell. Yeah. But its ultimate goal, because lust is not as old as TikTok. Lust is as, as old as this world, as, mm. as a human race. It's, it happened to Samson and there was no phones and there was no TikTok and there was none of those things. And he fell for it. He lost his eyes. He lost his freedom and he lost his ministry. And I think for those of us who are watching right now and those of you who are watching right now and maybe you feel under attack and you get you feel like the enemy has taken that purity and you lost that purity and you you lost that vision the enemy is after you he wants to take your vision he wants to take your ministry he wants to publicly scandalize your life and end your relationships and he uses that there his he has one person that's going to be on his payroll and that's going to be delilah and that delilah is lust that delilah is pornography so i do believe that it's a demonic agenda to tries to use tries to use our flesh but at the same time, to really destroy our ministries, destroy our potential, and to destroy our future calling. That's so good. Mike, you have anything you want to throw in with that? 
Yeah, you know, I mean, I do want everybody to understand that sex was not Hollywood's idea. It was God's Come idea. Mm-hmm. And, and God doesn't remove, he replaces. You know, so it's like, for example, God didn't take my alcohol away. He replaced it with the new wine of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And on. so it's like, he just... I think when people are religious, they're like, oh, you know, don't drink, don't smoke, don't have sex. It's like, no, listen, like God wants to replace. And so what what happens is I exchange my alcohol for the new wine. I'm experiencing the intoxication of the Holy Spirit. But in the same way, you give up your sexual perversion for true sexual fulfillment. And I've said this before, but, you know, I studied at Indiana University, Bloomington, which is a Big Ten university. And I I attended courses from the Kinsey Research Institute of Sex, which is basically the largest sex research institute in the world. And I remember being a full-blown atheist in one of these classes. This is obviously 20-something years ago. And they came out with a study and they said, our largest comprehensive study that we've ever done showed that the most sexually satisfied people on the planet were opposite gender, uh, long-term monogamous married couples. And I just started laughing because I'm like, AKA the book of Genesis, God's plan. Yes. <laughs> so, so this is like, you know, we have this whole agenda right now. Everybody's yeah. trying to say, this is, this is how you can be satisfied. Mm-hmm. And yet the data scientifically proved yeah. that God's way is the best way. So part of this broadcast isn't, oh, you know, this is uh, toxic purity culture where we want you to shut down all your sexual dis- Desire. No, actually, I believe you can righteously fulfill it through the covenant of marriage and have the most mind blowing sex imaginable. And uh, what we're trying to do is if you get free from lust, that's not being free from sex. <laughs> yes. It's free to have sex in the context of covenantal marriage. And so I'm not letting the world uh, define it and I'm not letting the world have the, the best of it. <laughs> God's got a monopoly on that. That's Can so I get good. an amen in the chat? Amen, amen, amen brother. brother. I, I, you know, perversion at its root is the wrong version of something. And that's what the world yeah, does is it perverts everything God has done. It gives you the wrong version. And guys, here's how crazy it is. Your body knows that it's wrong. You have secular people Come doing on. this whole thing of no more masturbation, no more porn. And secular atheists say, I feel terrible after I masturbate. I feel terrible after I watch porn. I remember before I was saved, every time I would masturbate or watch porn, I'd feel gross. And I'm like, why do I feel gross and filthy? My body knew this was wrong. This was not right. So how are we gonna let atheists and secular influencers be like, oh, we're doing no fap, we're doing no masturbation month, we're doing no porn. And then we have Christians over here like, uh, it's not a huge deal. It's a massive deal. It's a massive deal. It is perversion and it leads to other things that are even worse than just the natural desires. Uh, This is one of the best descriptions I found in scripture and Solomon gives it in Ecclesiastes 726. We can't talk about lust without mentioning this verse. This is what Solomon, who's the wisest person in the Old Testament, obviously Jesus is the wisest person in the Bible. In the Old Testament, he says this, I discovered that a seductive woman is a trap more bitter than death. One translation says, a woman that's seductive is worse than death. And then he says this, her passion is a snare and her soft hands are chains. This is what, this is the key. Those who are pleasing to God will escape her, but sinners will be caught in her snare. So he describes this lust, this woman as a trap that he's unable to escape from. This is how some of you feel tonight. You feel exactly what Solomon's describing. Isaiah, I'm stuck in a trap. I can't get out like a bear that has his paw stuck in a bear trap. There's no way out. And I'm just going to have to sit here until I die. And really, that's what lust does. It will get you stagnant. It will get you complacent until you just are older. And you never fulfill your destiny because you're living your life in secret shame. A guy that deals with lust doesn't have the boldness to preach. A guy that deals with lust doesn't have the boldness to do what God's called him to do. What Jezebel does is she gets Elijah hiding in a cave. What Jezebel does is she gets you to hide. And the prophets, some of you are thinking right now, why is there not more bold guys like Pagani or like Mike or like Vlad or like Isaiah? And I'm not here to toot our horn, but you're wondering where are the prophets? Where are the men of God? There should be a thousand Isaiahs, a thousand Vlads, 
blowing the trumpet shouting about this. I'll tell you where they're at. They're hiding in the cave of shame. They're hiding in the cave of pornography. The prophets are hiding. And tonight we are calling the prophets out of the cave and saying, get free. Men and women of God, stop. Get your hands off your private area. Put your phones down. Get in holiness. Get in consecration. Because literally, this spirit, this sin is causing you to not fulfill your destiny. God is calling you out of the trap. And I'm here to tell you, there is a way out. What is the way out? Look at this. Those who are pleasing to God will escape her. So if I start living my life not to please my flesh, not to please my private areas, not to please my brain cells and get more endorphins and more serotonin, but if I start living my life saying, no, 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 I'm not going to please my body. I'm not going to please my flesh. I know what my flesh wants. It wants me to do that dirty thing again, but I'm going to please God as you please the Lord. You will escape from this woman because what you said earlier, Vlad, it was like something was after you. This spirit of seduction, this lust, it's after leaders. Massive issue right now. So many leaders, what 90 plus percent would you guys say of ministers and pastors are falling to Jezebel? And as you quoted earlier, Pagani in Revelation 218, God says, don't tolerate this. Guys, Mm -hmm. we are here to blow the trumpet, sound the alarm. Jezebel, out in Jesus' name. We're not going to tolerate you. We're not going to play games with you. We're here to go to battle. Jezebel's after the prophets. Go ahead, Vlad. Isaiah, I think that what we have in our culture, you also mentioned one of the rise, why there's a rise of this in our culture. Um, A lot of people think that lust is man's weakness. Mm. And I think as long as you treat it as weakness, you will never be delivered from it. Joseph did not tell Potiphar's wife, I cannot do this weakness with you. He says, I cannot do this wickedness with you. Mm. Joseph didn't have 10 commandments, didn't have the teachings of Jesus or Matthew 5. Yet his definition of flirting with someone's wife was not man's weakness. Everybody struggles with it. Lust is not a struggle. It's not a weakness, nor is it a defeat. It's a wickedness. Mm. It's a sin. And it's disobedience as long as we're misdiagnosing it and that happens a lot of times from the pulpit especially with an advancement of greasy grace where everything is allowed you pretty much you're saved it doesn't matter what you do you can never lose your salvation you're just simply you you're a work in progress work in progress is it's not when you're engaging in pornography and you're sleeping with your girlfriend that 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 is not sanctification that is come on sin that's living, indulging in sin. And I think with me, what started to happen at the young age, partially is because I grew up in the church where we were taught the fear of God. Today, yes. we are not taught the fear of God. Today, right. we're taught that God is my friend. Today, we're taught that Come Daddy on. God is my buddy I take to McDonald's with and I chit chat with the Holy Ghost. And we're so cool. We're so familiar with God. And we replace the reverence for God for a relationship with God, fear of God, for being familiar with God. And the Bible says only the fear of God causes us to run from sin. So we don't have to run from sin. We can run with sin as long as we confessed with our mouth, prayed a prayer that we're going to heaven. And so many people don't feel like they need to repent. They need to live a holy life because of this misdiagnosis that lust is just... uh, I remember when I was in the youth ministry for 14 years and I had a lot of guys would come to me and they would say this, "Um, pray for me, I have this weakness. I said, weakness is if you cannot lift 300 pounds. Mm. Weakness is if you have a hard time maybe with math. Weakness is not if you are masturbating. That's come not weakness. Come on, Vlad. Or people would come and say, hey, I'm pastor, pray for me. I'm just, I'm getting defeated in this area. I'm like, in which area? In your science homework or in your math homework? No, in <laughs> pornography. That's not defeat. Imagine coming to your pastor and saying, hey, pastor, pray for me. I'm getting defeated in the area of cursing. You're not being defeated. You're being disobedient. Come and on. until we diagnose this correctly, that it's disobedience, it's wickedness. This is not to bring guilt. The sin already builds that guilt, but we need yes. to stop being deceived with our sin. And then the fear of God comes in. And the fear of God will cause us what, what happened to Joseph, is we begin to flee it. 
instead of flirting it because we can't be delivered from something that is not our enemy something that we don't hate and something that we keep treating as weakness my struggle everybody struggles with did jesus watch porn come not on Vlad. everybody struggles with it jesus delivers us and causes us to live holy and righteous we're not perfect but we're being perfected and we are being sanctified so good the religious people are squirming in the chat right now get them Pagani, what you are know, your thoughts on what we're talking about? You know, um, I think uh, Vlad coined it so well. You know, um, it. You know, there's this, there's a dichotomy, there's a struggle that's going on uh, with anytime we are trying to implement uh, rules and regulation, it's mm -hmm. being labeled as legalism yep. or 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 being right. religious. I, I want those of you that are watching that rules are not restrictive; they're protective. Mm. When rules are designed to protect us, not restrict us, um, and I and I and I think we we uh with with, with this um, postmodern, I call it living room Christianity, where everything is centered around the living room with our father and with our dad, and we kind of like view uh, Christianity from the lens of you know uh, more of a family oriented, but. They forget that being a Christian is also being part of an army. Come you on, know? yeah, yeah. We're part, of, we're part of an army, and the Apostle Paul said in Galatians five, it says, "No soldier gets entangled with the affairs of this life." Yeah. Notice that it uses the word yeah. affair. What is mm -hmm. lust connected to specifically within the context of marriage when people commit adultery? They're having an affair, an entanglement. And I think when you keep that in mind that not only are he's our father and we're his children, but he's also my general and I'm a soldier. And mm, I'm that's I'm good. I'm required to live a, a, a lifestyle that is both res uh, restrictive and protective. Um, and not only that, but the seriousness of this idea of lust was um, outlined in scripture where Jesus even said just how serious it is. He said that mm. if I causes you to sin, yes, gouge it out. You know, um, now we know he's not telling us gouge out our eyes, but he is telling us just how serious and yeah. severe he takes this topic of yeah. lust. Not from the lens of relationship, but from the lens of but from the lens of enlistment. We are mm. enlisted in an army, not just in relationship in the army. Mm -hmm. So good. You That's know, so good. I want to just say to some of you too, is like, aren't you exhausted from keeping secrets all the time? I want to just talk to some of the married guys in the chat. Are you not exhausted that every time your wife calls your name, you don't think of the 10 things that she might have found out about? Like it's, it's, I said this before, it's exhilarating. When my wife calls me Isaiah, I'm not thinking, oh, did she find my history? Oh, did, oh, she, did she read that Instagram chat? Oh, did she get the texts? Like some of you, it's actually exhausting carrying secrets. In fact, David said that his secret sin physically wore him down, that his physical mm -hmm. body was wore down from hiding secret sin. And let me just give you some fear of the Lord. Romans 2, chapter 2, verse 16. And this is the message I proclaim. So Paul, what is the message? Look at this. The day is coming when God, through Jesus Christ, will judge everyone's secret life. Beloved, I'm blowing the trumpet. God is going to judge that sin. You're not getting away with it. Like, what if my wife finds out? Who cares about your wife finding out? What if God finds out? Like your God can do so much worse than your wife. And some of you, you should think about if your wife finds out because you will shatter your wife if she finds out what you're watching, what you're listening. Well, my wife, and this is the dumbest thing I say, my wife doesn't look the way she used to look. You don't either. And that's not an excuse. Come on, guys. Where are you? We need to rise up. Luke 8, 17. For nothing is hidden that will not become evident. No secret will not be known and come to the light. So that means it's not if you get caught, it's when you get caught. Uh -huh. Today is the day to put it down because it will be exposed. Matthew 5, 28. I tell you that anyone that looks lustfully at a woman has committed adultery with her in his heart. This is very serious. You might have everybody fooled, but you don't have God fooled. Now, we're, again, we're not blaming demons on everything. We're Come not on. saying this is a demon. We're taking responsibility. Say, no, it wasn't a demon. It was my fingers that typed in that website. It was my fingers that scrolled on that porn site. It was my eyeballs that sat there and watched that porn. And the question is, why are you making God watch porn with you? 
if you're saying you're a Christian and you're saying you're full of the Holy Ghost, the Bible says, would you join Jesus to a prostitute? And the answer mm. is no. Come on, type no. in the chat. No. Then Come why on. are you committing sexual sin? Because you're joining your body to that prostitute, that sexual immorality. You're sinning against yourself. So mm -hmm. I talked to one guy. He's like, I just can't break free. I said, look, this is crazy thought and it's going to get clipped. And the heresy hunters, you know, they're dry from content. So they're going to use this clip right here. Would you watch porn with Jesus? And the guy said, no. Okay, then why are you watching porn? If you believe the Holy Spirit lives in you, Jesus mm -hmm. lives in you. When you're watching porn, you're making him watch it. You're connecting him to it. So we need what you said, Vlad, that fear of God to really break free from this and say, the fear of the Lord is going to stop me from getting on that website tonight. The fear of God. I'm Yes, I'm worried about my wife or husband finding out, but fear God, Jesus said, who could destroy both body and soul in hell. Like God. that is so serious to say, no, I'm not going to force Jesus to watch it. And I know some of you are in the chat saying, sorry, Lord. Good. You should be sorry. Yeah. You should repent and feel that holy Come conviction on. and that shame. Yes. I don't know why pastors are out here saying shame is a bad thing. When Adam and Eve sinned, they felt shame because of their nakedness. It was not a bad thing. Yeah. It was a result of their sin. So yeah, you should feel shame. Yeah, you should feel guilty. Yeah, you should feel dirty. But God can wash you and God can cleanse you. Lord. Guys, what are some differences? Now, again, we're not here saying it's all a demon. I want to talk a little bit about the differences between a spirit of lust, a demon of lust, and the flesh. Because again, we don't want to blame the devil. We want to take responsibility. If it is a demon, we don't even need to blame him because tonight we're kicking him out. So we don't even have to worry about blaming him. But let's talk a little bit about, uh, maybe I'll pass it to you, Vlad, the flesh versus a demon. How do we distinguish the difference? I know we've already gone an hour here and we're barely on mm -hmm. like our second or third thing we wanted to talk about. But let me just skip a few things here and let's just go into yeah. the demon versus the flesh. I think I heard it from uh, Apostle Pagani on this um, differentiation that the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 that to amputate um, your arm or your, your, your eye yeah. um, if you're dealing with lust. You know, and of course, we know that it, it's not speaking of physically removing any of our objects. And so how do you know that if it's just the flesh and you amputate, meaning you remove the trigger points, you set certain boundaries, usually mm. that is subdued because flesh gets Good. crucified. And when you crucify it, it's gone. The That's problem good. with demons, though, is that they don't leave when the flesh gets crucified. Usually they get more irritated because now they don't have that foundation and they, they go in full force. So if you remove the hand, meaning if you remove those trigger points, you remove those moments, those lonely moments, the boredom moments, the other things that causes you to fall, you, you put the password on your phone, you remove the social media. If you remove the hand and something is still touching, that's good. You're not dealing with the flesh, you're dealing with the demon. If you remove the eye and something is still seeing, you're not dealing with the flesh, you're dealing with the demon. So it's very simple. If you first, people who come up to me first and they're like, oh, I have a demon of lust. I first ask them, have you cut anything? Have you mm. went through a discipline that is equivalent to self-mutilation? The pain of this discipline has to be equivalent, according to Jesus, right. to to this pain. When Joseph fled from lust, he ended up in prison. There has to be a place of prison for your passions, a place of restriction. When you're in prison, you are you are not free, meaning there has to be limits on your freedom. And interesting, Samson flirted with lust. He ended up in prison. Wow. The only difference is Samson came from prison to his funeral and Joseph came from prison into his promotion and so every person is going to end up in some kind of a prison it's better to subdue yourself to to discipline where you're experiencing a certain level of pain you're not trying to hurt yourself but you're experiencing some restrictions in your life and if you've done that and something still keeps seeing something still keeps touching so something still keeps handling you're most likely dealing with the foreign entity that needs to be dealt with with oh, deliverance God. Good, so good, good. I want to do, if you guys don't mind, quickly just go over for those that are confused of what is the flesh, because I'm seeing some people in the chat are like, I don't really understand what is the flesh. If you guys don't mind, give me two minutes here. Romans 7, 18 actually tells us what the flesh is. And this is what Paul says. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is in my sinful nature. For I desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. 
I do want I do not want to do I do not do the good I want to do but I do the evil I don't want to do this is what I keep doing so the flesh in the Bible refers to the fallen human nature characterized by sinful tendencies and sinful desires what Paul is describing here Paul is saying this in a nutshell sounds kind of confusing there's something in my human nature that I don't want. It keeps dragging me and telling me and giving me desires. And this is natural tendency. This is the fall in nature, the part that craves sin. This is the enemy to God. This is what the Bible says entices you, drags you away. That is the Bible describing the constant war between the flesh and the spirit. Very simple right here. Whatever you feed more will win. If you're in the chat and you're confused about why, I just never want to pray. I just never want to read. I just never want to do anything godly. It's very simple. You feed your flesh more than your spirit. If you're feeding your flesh TikTok eight hours a day, it's no wonder you pray only eight minutes a day. If you're watching mm-hmm. Netflix six hours a day, feeding your flesh, then your flesh becomes stronger than your spirit. If you're watching pornography and you're in the secret place of porn, but not the secret place of prayer, then now your flesh is stronger. So the Bible says this, Galatians 5 19 these are the works of the flesh the acts of the flesh are obvious so what are the what does the flesh want to do sexual immorality this is Galatians 5 19 impurity debauchery okay. idolatry witchcraft hatred discord jealousy fits of anger and rage selfish ambition I'm describing some of you right here you're like that's I'm everything of those dissension factions envy drunkenness orgies and things like this so the flesh is those things but here's the good news here's the good news tonight we can overcome the flesh romans 6 6 says this for we know that our old self our flesh was crucified with him so that the body that was ruled by sin might be done away with that we should look at this no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin or the power of the flesh so the bad news is we're all we all have flesh the good news is Romans 6 6 the flesh is on the cross with Christ I've been crucified with Christ I have put away the flesh I've done away with the sinful desires it is no longer I that live but Christ that lives in me there is freedom from mm-hmm. the desires of the flesh so a demon we can get that cast out and the flesh we can pin him up to the cross we can stop feeding them, stop making them comfortable, and get set free. Your flesh is not, guys, your flesh is not this. Your skin, your bones are not your flesh. The flesh is the human fallen nature we all have that through Jesus we can crucify. So please stop with the excuses in the chat. There's no excuse. We can pin that flesh to the cross. Don't let a pastor lie to you. There is freedom. I love what you said there, Vlad. If you've removed the eye, you remove the arm, you remove the foot, but you still desire. Pagani, give us a little bit about the demon side, the demon of lust. You've you've been seeing a lot of people set free from this. What are some distinguishes from the flesh versus a demon? Well, I think uh, you guys defined it uh, pretty thorough. But what I have been noticing is is that um, as uh, we've been uh, traveling the country, uh, conducting deliverance, um, even on the clergy and pastors and leaders, um, I'm finding an immediate manifestation as soon as we target a uh, sexual perversion, uh, yes. lust, um, incubus, succubus, um, and some of the more uh, demons that are connected under the category of of sexual or uh, sexual uh, perversion. You know, mm-hmm. um, and um, I think it's I think it's telling. I think it's telling uh, that. This particular um, sin or demonic onslaught is strategic. I think it's strategic. Um, Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's uh, a lot more at the forefront than many uh, pastors and leaders uh, thinking. You know, and I think the Apostle Paul, uh, or rather the Apostle John, let us know this um, in 1 John, I believe it's chapter 2, when he talks about the struggle that the Christian have. He used it in three forms. And two of those, at least two thirds of those three are are dealing with lust. He said the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, 
-hmm. and the pride of life. So we at least see two thirds of that. And I think uh, that pastors and Christians, if they uh, get uh, sloppy, they get slothful and sloppy with it. I find that um, it becomes a a haven for the demonic to increase even after they've received deliverance. I, mm. I think if there's one thing that we need to guard even after we go through uh, deliverance sessions, it will probably be uh, probably be lost. So there, yeah. So there is an uh, a complete uh, new initiative that I think. Um, that is resurfacing. So I want to challenge all the deliverance ministers that are out there uh, that God has truly sanctioned you, you know, to uh, conduct the ministry of deliverance. We might need to return back um, um, and really focus on uh, lust again. And you're going to find that um, that sexual perversion in the demonic is rearing its ugly, its ugly head again. That's good. Mm. Mike, you have any thoughts on the flesh and the demon topic? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is something that I've been dealing with for a long time because I have a leadership college where, quite frankly, 100% of the people that come in, we interview them and they report back that they struggle with like some form of lust or perversion. And so everybody watching right now live who has the, the desire to be in full-time ministry, I know to some degree struggles with lust. And this is just a process we've had to take people through of discerning what is the flesh and then discerning, is it a demon? So I want to give everybody just seven ways that you can tell the difference. Um, Pagani literally just mentioned 1 John 2, I think. So if you look at 1 John 4, it, it talks about God being love. So if God is love and that's the standard, so I want to just give you seven ways you can determine what's the difference between love and lust. So what's, what's God personified through the Holy Spirit versus lust? So I'll do it quickly. So number one, love is patient, but lust is instant. Mm -hmm. So you're dealing with lust when it's instant gratification. Mm -hmm. uh, love is patient. Think about the process that you go through to meet somebody, then get engaged, yeah. then get married to them. I mean, it's a very long process, but pornography is instant. Number two, wow. uh, love is committed. Love is committed, but lust is convenient. Mm -hmm. So it's like when it, whenever you're in a relationship with someone, you know it's based on lust, not love, mm -hmm. if it's based on convenience. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to have to marry you. I don't want to have to pay bills. I don't want to have to move in together. I just want the convenience of this physical relationship. Number three, love serves, but lust is selfish. And so that's a wake-up call. Number four, love values the whole person the body, the soul, the spirit, but lust objectifies, objectifies a person. So it focuses just on the physical attributes of a person. And let's be honest. I mean, if you want to be in public ministry, but privately, every woman you look at is an object, why would God elevate you to the point where you're interacting mm. with more women? <laughs> so it's like, I'm telling you, there's people watching right now that the biggest deterrent to your next level is this, is you eradicating lust because God mm -hmm. can't promote publicly what you haven't destroyed privately. Okay, mm -hmm. let me just do a couple more. Um, love encourages, this is number five, love encourages personal growth, but lust compromises your biblical values. Everybody knows that feeling. There's a lot of women watching right now that you want to be with a guy so badly that you've compromised your biblical values and you're living in that dichotomy. And I've, I've been wanting to say this the entire broadcast, but every single time you make a decision for lust, you shatter a part of yourself. You fragment oh. yourself. Every single time you masturbate, every single time you go back to porn, and some of you are literally in, in shambles, and it's not the trauma that happened through your step parent. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not your narcissistic pastor who abused you. Actually, you have been the worst enemy you've ever had because you've shattered your life through lust, repeatedly wow. going back to it. So this broadcast is like monumental, and I've taken hundreds of people through a personal journey to do this. It's very near and dear to my heart. Um, number six, love is honest, but lust is deceptive. So if, I mean, and you know, the father of all lies is Satan. Yeah. <laughs> so wherever you see deception, you're going to see the deceiver. So how do you know it's more than flesh? Well, if your lust is causing you to lie all the time, you're starting to act like your real dad, which is Satan. You're a Come son on. of Satan. You're a daughter of Satan. Mm -hmm. So number seven, love drives you into your God-given purpose, but lust disregards and hinders your pursuit of God's purpose. 
the reason why is because you prioritize immediate physical gratification. And if you think about what it means to be a disciple, it's all delayed gratification. Yeah. It's actually, I'm looking forward to the resurrection mm -hmm. because that's my time The I'm pressing forward to, towards the prize in the, in the right now, it's all me willfully subjecting myself to pain. It's me dying to self. It's me being persecuted. It's me being talked about for the sake of the gospel to be a real disciple means we suffer well. Come so on. if you don't know how to suffer well, you're not a disciple yet, homie. And I think that's so hopefully these seven ways to determine what's lust and what's love what's the spirit of god versus what's a demonic spirit helped you guys kind of discern it a little bit better so good i wanted to add too is that trauma is a major open door a lot of people that we deal with and i want to even also say the explosion we see in the how do i say this without getting our video taken down in the alphabet skittles community that explosion i'm telling you guys right now is linked to pornography is linked to yeah. perversion because a lot of guys if you're confused in the chat of why this is happening to you all of a sudden you're having same-sex attraction and you don't know why mm. i'm going to tell you why you're watching pornography a spirit of perversions coming into you and when yeah. that spirit comes in guys remember spirits are people without bodies they are personalities literally their names are their personality when that spirit enters into you that spirit of perversion from internet pornography let's just for an example here so we don't get banned you don't get to tell that spirit what thoughts it gives you you don't get to tell that spirit what attraction so now you have a bunch of guys coming up saying i know i'm not gay i have i don't i've never had these thoughts but now i'm having all these thoughts about men and all these desires and i don't know what to do well where i don't know where it came from it came from pornography it came from yeah. lust it came from an open door so when you look at the graph of and i'm using my words very carefully here the graph of who now identifies as trans who now identifies as non-binary whatever there's fifty thousand different things now right whatever you want to label yourself as and add that to the graph of internet pornography exploding only fans culture patreon culture everything we can go and do that's a whole nother broadcast those graphs match they match the rise of pornography and lust and shall I say anime pornography, whatever that, I forgot what the name of it is, but it's a genre of pornography. And you match that with the alphabet movement. Again, I'm trying to use my words sparingly. Those graphs are the same. They rise at the same time because, mm -hmm. and you guys might agree, you guys might not, I think all of you here agree with me. It's a spirit. It's a spirit that's attached and is entering into people, telling them, oh, you're this, oh, you're that. And then they get on the video and they say, these are like famous YouTubers, they say, yeah, I decided now I'm trans, I'm whatever. And they go, I'm, I'm going to be this way because there's something in me telling me you're a boy trapped in a girl's body or you're a girl trapped in a boy's body. And there's a voice. This is what they say. Uh -huh. There's a voice telling me I'm trapped in your body. I mean, come on. How much more clear could they say I'm a demon living in this person, stuck in this person, and it's clearly demonic it's clearly perverted is it what is it there's this anime porn that's very popular now all these people are watching it hentai and now all these people are saying oh no i'm trans no i'm not binary after watching this it's so perverted it's so demonic and where are the pastors where are the leaders where are the people standing up against this stuff saying guys we got to push back against this culture we got to push back against these things do you guys think there's a link. Am I am I missing something? Is there a link? Do you I think with like no, pornography this, versus this whole community rising up? I want to throw, I want to throw a quick stat out because I was literally reading about what you just said today. This stat is going to blow everybody's mind. And I think it confirms that there's something majorly wrong and demonic and dysfunctional. So there's this Gallup study that found that almost 20% of Generation Z now identifies as the alphabet community. Wow. But just to put that into like some kind of framework work for you guys, less than 3% among the older generations identified. Wow. So that's like a 17, that's like a 16 to 17% increase in one generation in people that identify and that so that's not biological 
Right. Like straight up. I mean, you know what I mean? It doesn't, that is not explainable by a physical, biological, that's sociological, it's psychological and it's supernatural. It's spiritual. And those are the factors. Like you said, it's the exposure to pornography. It's the, and it's the popularity of it. I mean, it's trendy. You know, there's a lot of people now that identify with it and they're, and I've, I've said this too, from a biological standpoint though, the mechanics of sex are very basic. So just because something is pleasurable does not mean that that's your personality and that's your identity mm. because you know and i think what's happening right now is people are engaging in these experiences and it's trendy right now they're watching things and i mean to go from three percent among the older generations that identify in the alphabet community to now t- almost 20 percent of gen z th- this right now should be like sound the alarm like you said, this is the the real pandemic. This is the thing that we need to be concerned about like never before because and we there's a need for deliverance. And while we're talking about this, there are pastors and ministers and Christian influencers watching this broadcast saying everything, oh, it's not it's not yep, a demon. Yep, yep, absolutely. <laughs> Ignorant and blind. And another trend I'm seeing is you have a lot of young ladies that God has called to be Esthers, God has called to be Ruths. And literally in our culture, some of you might be out of touch where we're at right now in this culture is young girls are coming out of high school, going to college, and instead of being, oh, I want to be a mom, I want to be this, I want to be a nurse, I want to be a teacher, whatever it is they want to be, now they're going, hmm, I could just make an OnlyFans. And I can skip motherhood, getting married, being a nurse, being a school teacher, being whatever, a homemaker, and now I can go directly to OnlyFans and I'll get paid a million dollars a year to show my body and now we have sex trafficking on OnlyFans because that's literally what it is on a mass scale and it's no wonder these young girls are getting sucked into this because they're saying well I could either go do all this hard stuff at college and work or I could just make an OnlyFans and get millions of dollars and all these men will pay me to basically so it's really a new thing happening it's a new generation yeah. rising up the devil's really taking his gloves off and just went all out and it's a war like never before and we need spiritual snipers warriors that are going to rise up and say we got to fight against this we got to talk about this we have to pray about this and we have to stop funding this guys mm-hmm. let me just say this last thing i'll turn it over to one of you guys because i talk way too much um period okay when you watch and it's going to get real right here internet pornography when you buy an OnlyFans, you are directly supporting sex trafficking. When yeah. you're on these websites, you are funding sex traffickers. You are funding people that are trafficking women. These organizations, you could talk to a guy like Joshua Broom, who's friends of all of us, that was in the sex industry, that was in the adult porn industry. 100%, it's all drinking, drugs. These girls are getting drugged. They're getting filmed. They're getting literally on, all of them are on drugs. And he said that all the people he worked with have all commit suicide. I think he said 50 plus of the people he worked with have all commit yeah. suicide. Wow. This is modern day sex trafficking. So just so you young men and young ladies decide tonight you're gonna watch that, you are giving into sex trafficking. You are funding sex trafficking by doing this. And a lot of these OnlyFan girls say, I don't really wanna do this, but I'm forced to do it because it's the only way to do this or the only way to do that or my boyfriend said this or my, and then you have guys now, these modern day pimps, they're, they call themselves OnlyFans managers. We're just exposing the whole industry. And now they, they have like 30 girls that, they, that work for them and they're literally yep. pimps. And they're trafficking these young 18 year old, 19 year old, 20 year old girls. And then here you guys are in the chat funding this. It's terrible. When you guys watch that Sound of Freedom, this is all linked together. The money's all linked together yeah. and it's an epidemic. Sorry, one of you guys tee off here because I'm just in, going. In pornography, is what we have to also understand is that we know that there's a demonic part, there's a flesh component of it, you know, uh, but there's also a brain. Um, issue that happens with it. Pornography is a drug that's worse yeah. than cocaine yes. and heroin. Because cocaine is a drug that boosts the dopamine in your brain, makes you feel high, and you want more. And this dopamine is why many, you know, why many addictive things get released. Heroin relaxes a person. And so after people use a lot of these drugs, they begin to feel they need more drugs to feel the same effects. The challenge with pornography, it's actually a mix of both drugs. Mm. As cocaine, it releases this high and the heroin relaxes. 
pornography does both things. It gets person excited like cocaine and then it releases tension like heroin, which makes it very addictive. Online pornography doesn't just give people pleasure. It actually changes the brain so the people need harder and bigger and more porn to feel exactly the same pleasure they felt at first time. Unlike yeah. alcohol addiction, un unlike drug addiction, that doesn't actually deal with who you are because drugs are not wow. part of who you are. Sexual addiction is the, is the hardest thing to break because it's actually trying to walk out of something that, that is part of you because wow. alcohol is not part of you. Sexuality, yeah. sexuality is part of who That's you are. Point. It's connected to your DNA. It's connected to your brain. And so to be able to break that, it requires a lot of deliverance. It requires discipline. Uh, for a lot of people, it requires also inner healing. It requires dealing with some of those traumas or some of those roots of abandonment and other things and re re rewriting the whole um, new habits and, and new lifestyle. And I remember um, dealing with this uh, businessman who very successful businessman and you know he came uh, from a different city and begging uh, for deliverance because he said I i'm addicted to uh, to sex with this particular person and of course they took him through the deliverance but the problem is there was more than it wasn't the deliverance that he needed as much as he needed other things as well and a lot of people of course they don't want to do other stuff like discipline and cutting things away right. but they just want to go for deliverance because so they don't have to take on the responsibility of crucifying mm. the flesh and I remember when I came in contact with him and the way he described that, I almost felt like I was listening to a heroin addict. He, yes. he was literally addicted to it. Now, of course, he developed a soul tie with this particular person already. He can't think of anything and he's making millions of dollars and he's an addict. He got trapped. He's like, I never mm. did drugs. I don't do alcohol. None of the stuff. But this thing trapped me. And so for people who kind of think that this is not a big deal, I'm just going to watch a little bit of porn there and there. Your brain is being rewired. Wow. Not only your brain is being rewired, you're actually getting hooked on something that's worse than heroin and cocaine put together. Once you go deeper and the enemy will bring the leash closer and closer to himself and his goal is to make you completely not functional addict of this thing. And that's why we got to run from this. We got to do whatever it takes to find freedom and to walk in purity and to walk in righteousness. So good. I Go ahead, Pagani. I know you're going to say something there. I was just going to say that I think now would be the perfect time. Um, how we can give them some strategies and some key good. points on how they could get set free. Because I'm feeling like, man, there's, there's deliverance in the air. And I think people right now realize, yes, that's me. I'm, the, I'm, I'm that guy that's addicted. You know, and I think it might be a nice way to kind of lead into yes. that. They could get some, some Bring truth. some hope, maybe. Yeah, get some help tonight. So good. I was thinking, I was looking at the clock going, it's 3.30 a.m. for Mike right now in London. We, I told him we're not going three hours. We could definitely do a part two on this. But Pagani, what you just said is right on. I felt the same. Um, this is one thing I want to just make very clear. Jezebel has been underestimated and lust has been underestimated. I want to tell everybody in the chat, there's 6,500 people watching. Lust is stronger than you. You've been a thousand times you've tried to defeat it. It's interesting because a lot of the sins the Bible talks about, it's like, we got to fight these sins. We got to crucify. When the Bible speaks of lust, it actually says to run from it. It says to flee from it. For some yeah. of you, you're not strong enough to fight. Now, if you're going to get in a fight and the guy is way bigger than you, let's just be honest. What do you do? You run from it. Don't, I already know I'm not, I have no chance fighting this guy. I want you to see lust as that tonight. Now, this is apart from deliverance, because deliverance, we're going to cast that joker out of you. We're now talking about after your deliverance, when you're dealing with lust of the flesh, you need to run. 1 Corinthians, write this down, chap. 1 Corinthians 6.18 says this. This is what we do. This is the crescendo of the night. Flee or run from sexual immorality. Every other sin. So notice what Paul is saying. He's going to identify lust as a sin in its own category. He says, okay, put every other yeah. sin in another category. Lust mm -hmm. is all by itself. Every other sin is committed outside the body, which is what Vlad was talking about. And Vlad, I've never heard that. That's so interesting how it's part of the body. So it's different than like drugs or drinking. Paul says every other yeah. sin is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. So mm -hmm. sexual sin is mm -hmm. the only sin that you do against yourself, against your own body. So the antidote is to run from it.
Now, Jesus also says in Matthew 18, 8, if your hand foot causes you to sin, cut it off. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Why? It's better to enter heaven with one hand or one foot than to enter hell with both of them. So yes, we need to cut those things off. But this is what, what you said, Begani, Jesus is saying, be extremely drastic. Okay. Yes. When it comes to getting free from lust, I found the only way to get free is you have to be extremely drastic. That means I need to treat myself like a child. I need to get rid of my laptop. I need to get delete yep. my Instagram. I need to delete my TikTok. Now the guys in the chat or the pastors are like, this is too much. That's because you don't know how dangerous this sin is. You haven't done enough studying to realize that this will drag you to hell. When the Bible describes lust, it says it's worse than death. And it will. Uh, the book of Proverbs says she will drag you to hell. Okay, so yeah. I want you to know how serious it is. Get rid of the laptop, get rid of the website. Every one of us have a different trigger. Every one of you have a different trigger. You know what video is gonna trigger you. You know what website's gonna trigger you. You know what social media platform. Something is triggering you. Something is stirring up that lust, turning you, turning you, and I, I didn't wanna say it this way, but it's the only way to say it, turning you on. Something is literally flipping the switch and turning you on. And it might be different for me than it is for you. So whatever that is, someone said, yeah, for me, it's romance novels. I would have never even thought of that. I would never even thought well, of that, major. but for you, you need to get rid of that. So whatever mm -hmm. it is, you need to run from it. You need to flee. Now you might say, well, how do I practically flee? What do you mean run? Do I just run from my phone? No, the word flee means do everything possible to avoid, get out of the proximity. So maybe that's your web, your laptop, maybe that's your phone, maybe that's your Instagram, maybe that's your TikTok, whatever it is, you need to run away from it. You need to get rid of it. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. And then last thing I'll say, and one of you can could uh, tag team this, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, this changes everything. It says this, no temptation is overtaking you that is not common to man. In other words, everybody has the same temptations. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, look at this, he will also provide a way of escape that you can endure it. So this is what I tell guys all the time. No matter what you're tempted with, whether it's food, porn, girls, anything, find the exit. There's always an exit. Just like at the church, there's that green banner, that green sign that says exit in case of emergency. Every temptation, according to 1 Corinthians 10, 13, God gives an exit door. So when you're about to be tempted, when you feel that fire of lust burning in you, when it's 12 at night and you're getting ready to go do that dirty thing, look around and say, hold on. I remember what the demon slayer said in the podcast, find the exit. Where's the exit? There's always an exit. Go find that exit. Listen, and it's going to sound funny to some of you. I don't care if you have to get up and eat a, bo a bowl of pasta. I don't care if you have to jump in the cold shower. I literally don't care. Whatever you have to do, get the phone, throw it out, lock it. I don't care if you have to type in your password wrong 10 times and lock your phone for 45 minutes. Whatever you have to do, you need to do to flee from this. I don't care if you have to get creative, okay? Jump out the window and roll around in the wet grass. I don't care. You need to get rid, you need to flee, you need to cut this thing off um, because it's the only way. 2 Timothy 2.22, last verse. Flee from the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So run from these desires and pursue faith, love, and peace. Guys, what do you got? I'm sorry, I know I took all the verses. I just took every verse that says flee. Um, you guys have any thoughts on getting practically getting out of this? I think Mike has something. I saw you ready to release. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I'd love to give everybody the five ways that I personally overcame lust. Because I, I sat down for, for tonight and I thought, what are the things that I did? What what actually helped me? Because there's so many cliches. And there, and so I, it, you guys already, I've already nailed said all most the cliches. of them. Which I was, <laughs> I've already, I've given all the Christian no, cliches. No, actually, you, no, you mailed it. It's funny because I'm going to read them right now just because I sat down. I was like, man, I want to help these people because I know they're desperate. I mean, there's nothing more defeating than relapsing back into lust and that yes. feeling of how low. I think that feeds so many people's, uh, you know, that shame and condemnation. And we lose so many people in the body of Christ to this. So I'm going to give you the five ways to overcome lust. So number one, as you already mentioned, remove all triggers. But I would say Psalm 101, 31, it says, I set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Mm. 
So unfollow every account, block every account, delete every app, get a dumb phone, you know, watch YouTube only on your television in your family room for when the Demon Slayer is broadcast. But you you have to be extreme because I want to say this before I go to the, the next four. Your actions are the biggest indicator of what you truly value Come and on. what you truly believe. That's and true. so when you're trapped in lust, what you, what your actions are saying is, I would rather pleasure myself than please God. Mm. That's straight up what, you know, so, I mean, right now, there's, this should be deeply convicting because when you say, you know what, I got a dumb phone without the video capability because I'm that serious, what that action would show is that's how much I love the Lord. There has to be this this a demonstration of your love for the Lord. Mm-hmm. So number one, remove all triggers. Number two, we all say the phrase renew your mind, but I have a real practical that helped me. So like in Isaiah, you nailed it. But typically lust, like when people interact and they do things they shouldn't, it's at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day. Yes. So you need to replace that with reading the Bible and praying at the beginning oh. of the day and reading the Bible and praying at the end of the day. So renew your mind means replace those times when you would engage with it with reading the Bible and praying. Uh Number three, this one was major. I've never seen a teaching on this. I'm thinking about doing an entire video on it, how speaking in tongues audibly can actually be a way of escape out of lust. Come on. Come on. For me, I, I started speaking in tongues every time. So for me, it was like lust of the eyes, like walking around, you know, seeing things. And so I noticed that when I started speaking in tongues, it would mm-hmm. out of the flesh into the spirit. And I would immediately see somebody. And instead of thinking lustful thoughts, I would think about how to minister to them or Come what on. am I discerning in the spirit. So speaking in tongues is a major a key. I've never heard anybody actually connect tongues to freedom from lust. But number four, and this one's going to be hilarious. So I put down confession, but you, you all who are watching who say, oh, I have an accountability partner. You have the wrong one. You Come pick on. somebody you're comfortable with telling. So when I used to do this with my interns back in the day, because I had a big intern program I ran, I would say, I would ask them, who would you be absolutely mortified if you found out that that you watch porn or whatever? And they would tell me, I would go get that person's email address and then hook their email up for the porn monitoring uh, software. And I'd be like, hey, congratulations, Pastor Vanessa is now going to get a notification every single time you watch porn. And they would be like, wait, what? So the, a lot of you, your accountability partner, it, it actually, some of you are so dirty and filthy. You like confessing it to people because you get, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, so I, that's a whole nother, okay. If you can tell, I'm a practitioner, man. I deal in this stuff for a living. Number five, this is the last one. I put redirect and this is, this helped good. me. So if you're in a marriage, that energy needs to be expended in the marriage bed. And if you're saying, oh, I don't like my wife's body. I remember I said that because my wife, after our first baby was like super depressed. And I remember saying, she's not the woman I married. Her body changed and she gained all this weight. And I remember the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Mike, your body, your wife's body is a reflection of your abuse. It's your lack of love. And if you'll start to love Julie, her body will transform in response to your words and your affirmation. And I started changing the way I spoke to my wife and she literally became a triathlete. I mean, literally wow. became a triathlete. And it, so if you, for those of you who are like, oh, my spouse's body, no, think about your words, not their body. Mm-hmm. Think about your treatment, not mm-hmm. their body, because you change those things and their body will change. Mark my words. And so when I say redirect, bring it into the marriage bed. But if you're single, I want to suggest that you, and this is apart from deliverance, because we're going to do that here in a moment. But you also need to redirect it into physical activity like working out, running, yes. because exhaustion is a great solution for lust. Some mm. of you have too much energy because you're lazy. Mm. You're sitting around in your bed. You, you don't even have one full job. You're lazy. You're not lustful. You're lazy, and laziness is producing lust. If wow. you were as busy as me, you'd be too tired to do it. So mm. it's like, and so I think some of you, especially men, you know, um, it's you need to get out there, move your and get to the point where like I'm just 
I'm exhausted. I've mm-hmm. expended all my, you know, David, and we all know this cliche, but David, at the time when kings were at war, he was not at war. Yep. And he yep. redirected that energy into Bathsheba. And so there, it, it's a reallocation of energy. You're going to do something with it. So spend it in the right direction. So those five things, that so was good. like, I really sat down and was like, how did I actually, aside from deliverance, mm-hmm. those were the five practicals. That's so good. You're making YouTube videos over here, bro. I know. I'm on to you. I'm on. You're over here. Five steps, seven <laughs> steps. So good. He's like, I'm traveling. I don't have yeah. time to make YouTube videos. We're going to do it here on the live. Add Isaiah Saldivar on the video. Yeah. Tag me. I'll you add. challenge me because I'll... you're so good. Come Each on. one of you are so good. You challenge me. I, I know, it, Isaiah. What you it. shared and uh, Isaiah shared 10 things and Mike shared five things. And uh, what I would share is that you can't overcome lust. <laughs> you just have to. <laughs> the Bible says that not to trust in the flesh. And I think if we come to that realization that our willpower is limited, yes. um, yeah. and uh, when our willpower gets depleted, you find yourself in the old disappointed self, which then starts the shame cycle. And then we feel ashamed, not because we're not capable of changing, but because we try to change. And I think that it gets us to the end of ourselves. And to some degree, I think it's also a good place to start because that's a place of brokenness, of realizing I need the gospel. I need the Holy Spirit, which Paul tells us, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Mm. He doesn't say don't fulfill the lust of the flesh so you can walk in the spirit, which means I have to come completely broken before Jesus, even I am free, I'm walking in freedom, but I've noticed one thing about deliverance is deliverance, when you get delivered and you start feeling really good about your freedom, you have to be very careful that you don't get cocky and Mm. that you don't become irresponsible or feel invincible, feel like you are above that. I don't have a flesh anymore. You still have a flesh. You're not in heaven yet. And so that humility of knowing that I cannot trust in my flesh and I cannot trust in myself to walk in that freedom, I need to trust in the Holy Spirit. For me, that's that's number one thing. And because I've dealt with mainly with some guys in my team when they got delivered and, you know, about three, four months ago, I remember one person, he fell back. He came to me and I asked him how his lifestyle was going. And he told me, he's like, honestly, um, I kind of got a little bit, um, felt like, I will never be able to fail again. I'm delivered. That's it. And he says, I took a lot of restraints out of my life, a lot of boundaries out of my life. And I think this was a humbling experience to remind me that I need Jesus every single day. Yes. And I am I am delivered. I just cannot get Good. lazy in my walk with God. My second thing that I would encourage, and uh, Pastor Mike already mentioned that, and for me, it's to avoid emotional minefields of isolation, yes. loneliness, mm. stress, and boredom. Yes. Those are kind of four things that I think they are used many times where temptations intensified. They even say that there are greater levels of psychological distress. Um, They can predict um, people's usage of pornography when people are lonely, depressed. They report greater desire to seek out pornography. Many people report using pornography to cope with feelings of stress, anxiety, and negative emotions. In short, People turn out to turn to pornography when they feel bad because pornography and masturbation offers them and temp- temporary relief to those feelings. What Pastor Mike mentioned about David. David found himself in boredom and then he boredom is one step away from bondage. Yes. If we don't go to the battle, meaning if you don't get engaged, your church has a prayer meeting on Wednesday night and you're at home doing your homework. In other words, watching Netflix. You're, you're not going to the battle. You're Come finding on. yourself now in the boredom. Preach. You find yourself in that laziness, that passiveness. You're one step away from temptation overtaking you because you're not engaged and you're stepping on the minefields. And so not that we have to have every single moment of our life busyness because busyness is not the cure for lust. But at the same time, we do have to be conscious that isolation, loneliness, stress, and boredom are going to be used for that. And then two more things that personally for me and one is to memorize the scriptures because 
Psalm 119 11 it says that your word I've hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you so the Good. more of God's word you put inside of you the more it begins to push out the rest of the junk and so I actually even have a Bible memory group with I think about 8,000 or 9,000 people right now where every Monday we put in new verse and I one of those things I actively engage with myself not just in because I'm feeling the battle with lust but just because as a person I want God's word to take deep root inside of me and by its sheer nature it fights against other forces that try to invade my soul and the last thing and that is to practice regular fasting mm. fasting has a way of I think it was T.D. Jakes that said he said that fasting is a preparation for temptation the problem with many of us we walk into temptation and our flesh has not been prepared meaning it has never gotten no from us it always gets a yes whatever it wants it gets fasting allows you to put your flesh into subjection before temptation it's almost like this unrealistic temptation because the temptation is a cookie and then if your flesh can be under control when it's dealing with an apple cookie or something else which are not sinful then when the sin comes in which is an image or a video or something you train your flesh in fasting it's easier to control it when you are facing temptation that's so good if i could add two that i practice um pastor mike and pastor vlad have mentioned many that i actually have written here but i haven't heard one yet um those of you that are watching starve the secular come starve on i was gonna say that come on. Starve say again. The secular. Come on. listen guys you can't be uh, looking for a life of purity um, and a life of consecration and you're inundated with hours and yes. hours of secular music uh, it, uh, filling okay. your and yep. you're watching hours and hours of movies uh, that are contaminating uh, your eye gates. Understand the secular is the gateway to perversion in your dreams. So you're going to find that you're going to end up having lustful dreams, wow. uh, wet dreams, uh, sexual perversion, incubus, succubus. What I have found um, in my own life back then and even conducting deliverance when someone is telling me that they're having a battle with sexual perversion in their dreams. The first thing I ask is how much time do you spend in the secular listening to secular yep. music? And 99 percent of the time they'll say all day. When I wow. say, how many times do you watch movies? And they'll be like, I'm a movie buff. You got to starve the secular. And let me tell you something. Those of you that are watching, that is not legalism. That is holiness. Come on. Right? That, is not, that is not being religious. That is being restrictive and rigorous. The second thing I want to say here, you know, um, Isaiah said the word and used the word drastic, but I like to use the word militant. Now look at the word militant. It means aggressive or vigorous. A militant mm protests now what do i mean by that is this have a militant approach to lust in your own life that those who would want to tempt you be too scared to come at you go ahead to, meaning you if i could see that you're still open uh to fornication and i could tempt you in conversation and you're still engaging with me then i'm gonna pursue it what do i mean by that wow. is this is be so militant against lust and perversion in your own life that a groupie now this is for my preachers that are watching go ahead and i'm saying this i'm saying this as a personal example most of us travel with our wives but there are engagements where we don't travel with our wives in all the years and i've been in ministry since 1995 i have yet to have somebody approach me on some ce celebrity preacher stuff or groupie stuff a temptation why because number one i am openly always talking about my wife I'm oh. always sharing that I'm in love with my wife. And not only that, I have a militant approach against adultery, which means I want to see somebody try to come and tempt me with a, I'll meet you at your hotel room. I promise you I'll embarrass that person. <laughs> so, when, so if there is a person that would even try to attempt me, they'd be too afraid to do it because they know I am not playing that. And, and watch this. Preacher, if you find that women are flirting at you, maybe you're just flirtatious and maybe you're yep. not being militant in your expression against it. Yeah. Be so holy that when they look at you, they would be intimidated and won't even try to come at you because you have a militant protest against okay. sexual perversion, whether in fornication, if you're single, as a minister or a preacher or an evangelist, or as a pastor leader against adultery. Be militant in your 
approach and be openly hostile against it. And you'll find that it will provide at least some uh, restriction. That way it won't even come in your radius and you find yourself, you won't be as tempted as much. And I'll be honest with you, us four together, we travel a lot and we have yet to see anybody really come at us because nope. they know, they know that we have zero tolerance against it. That's so good. The spirits know. Oh, the spirits in them know if you're messing around. Uh, I know we're almost two hours. I feel like we're just getting warmed up. So it's four in the morning for Pastor Mike. Let me just give two closing thoughts, and then any of you have a closing thought, and then I'm gonna have we're gonna pray mass deliverance really quick. I know Pastor Mike. I'm sorry. You look fine. You look like you're ready to go another hour. I'm just saying you look fresh. I think he you're, has like five more pages of notes, bro. Dude. You're fresh. You got two more YouTube videos in here. No, he's like he's thinking of shorts. He just bro, you're spitting out shorts all night long. I already know. Know, bro you're gonna have these edited by tomorrow man. collab with me if you post all those shorts you're spitting out okay um <laughs> two thoughts i had while you guys were speaking of people struggling that i'm reading the chat here number one some of you need to go ahead and get married i'm just gonna say it here paul said it's yeah. better to marry than to burn some of you guys out here you can't keep your hands to yourself you're on fire and not in a good way your crotch is on fire you need to get married it's a biblical <laughs> i'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't keep a straight face you need to get married i'm gonna tell you why i'm gonna tell you guys what's going on we have an entire <laughs> i can't <laughs> Listen, for those of you that are watching, this is how we are behind the scenes. We are real men. We are real guys. We're preachers, but we're still men, and we have fun, and we're for walking the same accountability together. So, <laughs> Paul said it's better to marry than to burn. Here's the thing. Okay. I'm, I got to stop. Here's the thing. Real talk serious. I'll stop laughing. We have an entire generation, stop me if I'm wrong, that says, uh, get married around 30, 35. 35 right. is too old to get married. 30 is too old. I'm just going to be honest. In my opinion, 25 is too old to get married. I got yep, married at 21. Married at I felt like it was a good age. Um, I got married at 24. I was 21. I think I'm not forcing you into marriage, but some of you, you're waiting. You're like, I don't know why I keep struggling. Well, I mean, you haven't had sex in 20 years. You're 40, 50, and you're trying to wait to get married at 35, 40. It's really, Paul literally said, it's better to get married than to burn with lust. So there's that. That's number yeah. one. Number two if you are married because again i'm responding to the chat here and you're like well my wife well my husband here's the deal it's not biblical and it's not healthy to be married and not be having sex i'm just gonna say it that way paul said the only reason why you should stop having sex is if it's for a season fast but he said after that season's over that fast uh, i'm using it for lack of a better term you need to come back together why yeah, yeah. because your wife's body belongs to you and your husband's body the husband's body belongs to the wife so it's not okay ladies and and men as well to withhold for six months or a year and get back at your husband no if that's where you're at you guys need to come back together you need to talk you need to get counseling you need to pray you need to fast you need to go through deliverance it's not healthy some of these guys and girls out here there's no excuse but you're struggling with pornography because you say well my wife you know, won't have sex with me or my husband won't have sex with me. You need to get prayer, counseling, fasting, deliverance. That is not healthy. And I know I opened up a whole can of worms. Do you guys want to speak to any of that before we pray? Because I opened up two huge cans of worms right there. I, I would say the opposite as well. I would say, fella, if you're watching and, you, and you're finding that there is a, a, a lack of uh, sexual intimacy in your marriage, then how about you make your wife fall in love with you again? Get her out of that Come kitchen on. on a date night, lavish on her, allow Ooh. her to fall in love with Ooh. you again, compliment her, emotionally be there for yes. her. All those things that caused you to be married at the first time and to, uh, when you guys were first dating, do those things again and make it a commonplace. I still tell my wife I love you frequently. I kiss her all the time. As a matter of fact, I kiss her even when she gets mad when she's cooking. Today I was kissing her while she was cooking and she was like, get off of me, I'm cooking. I kiss her a million times. I'm always expressing my love for my wife. I'm absolutely Good. in love with my wife. We've been married 24 years. I would say so. At the same time, fella, it's not just that she's withholding. Maybe it's a reason why she might be withholding though the Bible talks about not withholding, but there might be a reason. Why don't you fix yourself up, get yourself together, make yourself look attractive, and that way you're also contributing to her emotional uh, support to be able to want a desire to have you, and there'll be intimacy, and then there will not be this uh, uh, open hole, not, uh, this open uh, breach that we did. Let me also say to the, to the ladies, as well as the wives, just because 
uh, you're not uh, sexually motivated doesn't mean your husband's sexual drive stops. Mm. Just understand, maybe you're not in the mood. That man is always in the mood. Now watch this. You might think Preach. you could go long months without having sexual intimacy. A guy cannot. Trust me, if he's not getting it in the bed, he's getting it on his phone. Catch that revelation there. Okay, let me clean something up as well. Not what you said, but let me clean up something I said because the whole chat's going crazy. There's almost 7,000 people on here. I am not, don't be stressed if you're not married because the whole chat's going, I'm 40 and I'm not married. I'm 35. I don't want you to be stressed. I don't want to force you. Dating website let me clean it up. Let me clean it up. Let me clean it up. I don't yeah. want you to be stressed and I don't want to force anyone to get married. My point is this. I should have been way clearer, but I'm just, I'm shooting off the hip here. My point is this. The culture has pushed marriage to 30s and 40s. Let's just be honest, okay? I don't think, I could be wrong, I don't think God's intention was to get married at 35 or 40. I'm not saying you're wrong if you're 30 or 40 not married. I'm just saying the culture has keeps pushing it out. And I think it's probably God's will, you know, 18 to 25 is the sweet spot. So that's just me. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm old school. Maybe I'm a little bit Ukrainian. All I'm saying is I think that that's the right area. But if you're 30, 40, don't be stressed. I'm not trying to condemn you, uh, give you an anxiety attack. Go ahead, Vlad, say something. Help me out. Clean me up. No, clean I, up what I, I said. Mike, uh, Pastor Mike, well, what did you have? You, you know what I do? I, I actually started it. You know what? I, this is a true story. So my monthly partner meetings, we, we, we have those Zooms running for like four or five hours. And I tell the single people, this is your chance. Go from, we have breakout <laughs> rooms. And I'm like, you guys are all monthly partners. So I know that you all have the same value and so, I, hey, man, I'm trying to make it happen for all the 40-year-olds in the chat right now. I got you guys. Come on. But and there's all there's also some that are called to not be married. Let me just say that. But right. go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, listen, I agree with you, Isaiah. I think people, they they shack up. They live with each other. They, you know, they Or they don't have a value for marriage. And many of you, this, this was your wake-up call. Like, you know, um, he who finds a wife finds a wife so go out and find her you know go you ahead. found the porn site you go know ahead. you found your favorite you found your favorite porn actress you found hey, you're go good on. at finding hey, stuff you, you found so go find a wife yeah i don't know <laughs> maybe this is just my 4 a.m delusional london talk right <laughs> mike need to go to bed he's tired today that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and and let, let me give this last grandpa. thought. I, I, this is my my third last thought. Let me give my third last thought. And I'm done. I promise. You and then I'm gonna have Pagani pray man. mass deliverance. Yeah, we could go all on this because I feel like we're just opening something up here. My last thought, and this is it. I'm done because I opened up the can of marriage, so I have to end with this. Your porn addiction is not going to be solved by getting married. Let me say that one more time for those sitting in the back. Your porn addiction is not going to get better because you get married. You need to deal with it now. I've lost track of how many young couples get divorced because the guy never got deliverance. He never broke free. Guys, do your wife a favor. Get free before you get married. Ladies, do your husband a favor. Get free before you get married. Do not come into marriage thinking, I'm only struggling once I'm married. The struggle will go away. That is not the truth. You need to get free before. Okay, I'm done. Anyone has last thoughts? And then and, uh, Pagani. I'm going to just yeah, share that before we go into the deliverance. Um, for those of you who maybe are falling or you have fallen and perhaps by this time that you have listened uh, to us, um, what you heard added more guilt and more shame. And um, I just want to give just an encouragement. Uh, Proverbs 24, 16, it does say that for the righteous man may fall seven times and rise again. Yeah. But the wicked shall fall by calamity. You are a righteous person. If there's a sense of guilt, shame, um, that means that you're not lost. People don't drown by falling into water. Mm. They drown by, stay, by staying there. So get up, um, repent, run to the cross. You know, I love the encouraging words that Jesus gave to Simon. He said, Simon, Simon, Satan asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But he said, I prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And then he says this, when you return to me, strengthen your brethren. You know, Matthew 12, 45, it talks about the whole seven spirits that are more wicked, you know, than the spirit that left the house. And it says this, and then they returned to the house. You know, and though that Matthew 12 deals, I believe, with other things than just deliverance, mm -hmm. but there is the demons returning, and then there is us returning. And so we have to return. Uh, we have to return to God. We have to ask Him to forgive us. I remember when I fell repeatedly, 
and I came to my pastor. Something my pastor told me. He saw that I was so beaten emotionally. I was so distraught. I mean, I thought that not only I lost my salvation, I thought that it's over for me. I'm like 14-year-old, just starting to preach. And I remember came at 11 p.m. on Saturday. My pastor was already sleeping. I, I, I went straight to his room. His wife left the room and he had to wake up to his wife, send him to a different room. And I'm shaking because I'm scared to death. And, and I remember words that my pastor told me that really honestly helped me to prepare me for deliverance. And he said this, he said, Vlad, the devil's goal is not pornography. He said, the devil's goal is guilt. Mm. He said, pornography, what, how long you watched it for? He's like, five minutes, 20 minutes max. He says, but you will live in guilt for days. He says, guilt will do more damage and shame than that pornography did. And he's like, and this is something that my pastor told me. He wasn't trying to justify it. He, he saw my earnest desire to live holy and to live righteous and the shame, the guilt that I felt. And he said, get up. And he says, I'm going to pray for you. Jesus is going to forgive you. And he said, pretend that it never happened and go and live your life. And I'm like, but what if I fall again? I'm addicted. And he says, you're going to come. We're going to pray. You're going to get up again. And honestly, it, he wasn't condoning that, but he was also bringing me to the cross, bringing me to the gospel every single time. And, and it was after a few years that I experienced that breakthrough and that deliverance. But I know people who give up when they fall and they say, you know what, it's over. That's just who I am. That's not who you are. Come You're on. a child of God. This is not, you're not a pig that is comfortable in the mud. You're a child of God. That's why you feel so disgusted. That's why you feel so empty. That's why you feel so shameful. And so get up from that. Rise up from that. Ask Jesus to wash you. And right now, I want you to open yourself up because God not only is going to wash you, but God wants to deliver you right there from the comfort of your room, the comfort of your office, or even if you're driving because deliverance is about to break out. And some of you, this is the moment you've been waiting for. And I'm going to pass on to Apostle Pagani. Amen. Pagani, why don't you pray against the Spirit? We'll really focus on that and, and pray for freedom here. The first thing I want you guys to do, those of you that are watching, is number one, I want you to take maybe 10 to 15 seconds of full repentance, mm. complete turn away, Yes. turning away, not remorse, no more remorse. Those of you that are watching, no more remorse. We know that you're remorseful. What we need you to do is full repentance. It's a complete 180 turn, and I mean serious. And pray this prayer, even if you've lost that place of repentance, mm. say, Lord, make me have a desire to want to have a desire of mm. full repentance. Sometimes mm. we're so trapped in this cycle of remorse that we don't even, we can't remember when was the last time we've had true repentance. The, the second thing I want you to do is this, is I want you, as you do a 180 turn, I don't want you to turn and look at the arm of flesh, which means I'm going to show God how I can overcome uh, this uh, lust. No, you turn to the cross. You focus on Christ Jesus. It's a turning to putting your eyes completely on the author and the finisher of your faith, not on your strength uh, to overcome a loss, not faith in your faith. No, faith in him, faith in him. And that's what happens with many of you. You're trying to show God, okay, God, I'm going to overcome this. I'm going to show you that I can do this. And that I mean it. No, you turn to him face on him and focusing completely on him who is the author and the finisher. And the third thing is trusting in the power of the parakletos, which is the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of truth, which means Holy Spirit, you're going to help me overcome. And I want you to repeat, repeat this prayer after me. And it's just, it's just a, a guiding prayer, um, but it's your faith that connects it. And I want you to say, Heavenly Father, I believe that this podcast is speaking directly to me. I'm the one trapped in lust. I'm mm. the one committing pornography, watching pornography. I'm the one trapped in perversion, but I'm asking you to set me free. Holy mm. Spirit, yes. I ask you to find every foul demon of perversion yes. and lust in my mind, in my body, in my soul, and cast it out. Lord Jesus, now those of you watching me say it, Lord Jesus, find the generational curse of perversion and lust that is empowering 
the demonic in my life and break it now in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray. Satan, yeah, those of you that are watching, repeat what I'm saying. You're going to confront the devil itself. Come he ain't going to leave by you wishing him out. You have to confront the thing. Say, Satan, demon of perversion and lust, I yeah. command you in the name of Jesus, leave my mind, leave my body, leave my soul now in the name of Jesus. And I command you and I order you to go, go, go. Now, in the name of Jesus. Now, let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' yes, name, we yes. come in agreement right now. Lord, with their faith, Lord, and ours, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would release the yes. spirit of freedom to help set the captives free. Every person that's watching now, demon of perversion, go. Come out of the now in Jesus' name. Incubus, succubus, go. Wet dreams, masturbation. Come out of the now in the name of Jesus. Every demon of perversion and lust inside that pastor, that leader, that clergyman, that clergywoman, come out of the now in the name of Jesus. Every demon of, of fornication, every demon of pornography, every demon of of lust from the phone, TikTok porn, Facebook porn, social media porn. Come out of that young person now. Out, go now in the mighty name of Jesus. Release them now in Jesus' mighty name. Now, for those of you that are there and you're watching, come on, I want you to push those things out. Breathe those things out. Tell those things to go. I want you under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. If you have something in your house right now, whether it's on your computer, turn your computer on and delete on. all of that right now if you have something in the house that is a book that is a movie throw away that filth now in the name of jesus so heavenly father set them free right now in jesus mighty name i'm going to pass it over to mike and you guys continue to pray as the holy spirit guides you I, I believe somebody's being healed from trauma as soon as you were praying for that uh I, many of you are receiving deliverance but there's somebody that i believe there was trauma and and some of it is connected to something that happened to you and how you were abused even in your past so the lord's healing you right now it just like suddenly got like a just a vision of you being healed in that area so i just pray right now all trauma from past instances things that happen things mm -hmm. that they've never told anybody things that they've never confessed lord that you would heal and restore them in the area of their emotions right now that yes. lord you would heal and restore them in the area of their mind right now god that you would touch and heal them even in their body where they were uh, victimized god where they were traumatized lord and i thank you that you are healing and restoring and father you are faithful to even go back to that place of pain and to begin to minister right now and heal God yes. to route out all perversion and all wickedness. Yes. And Lord, we thank you for your blood that washes them, your blood that makes them pure and holy and acceptable before you, your blood, Father. And we just thank you for, for what you did on the cross, Lord, to ensure that we can live empowered by your Holy Spirit. Yes. Thank you. And we command every spirit of homosexuality to come Come out in Jesus' name. Every yeah. spirit of perversion, every spirit yeah. telling you you're this gender, you're that gender, you're in the wrong body. Yeah. We command yeah. that spirit out of the mouth and into the abyss now in Jesus' now. name. You Amen. have no power. Amen. You have no authority. Loose them. In Jesus' name, Amen. out in Jesus' name. The blood yes. is against you, Satan. Every sexual foul yeah. spirit of Jezebel, yeah. perversion, yeah. lust, or homosexuality, go now. Come out of their body leave their body now the blood is against you we bind Amen. every foul spirit right now you are bound we bind you in jesus name in jesus name in jesus authority yep. i pray lord everyone that came in through trauma as mike just prayed every spirit yep. that came in through trauma must yeah. come out now in jesus name every spirit that came in through abuse must come out now in yeah. jesus name leave their bodies confusion Spirit of confusion, we call you out. We know you're there. We're on to your sly ways. Go, yes. go out in Jesus' name. The blood Jesus. is against you. Come out, come out in Jesus' name. Every mm. spirit must go right now. Jesus Every name. spirit of confusion, perversion, and lust right now. You must go, go, go. Every unnatural desire you've been having, I don't care if it's this, men, women, children, animals, the weird stuff you've been thinking about in your mind, we command those spirits, giving you those perverted thoughts. Yes. Go, come go, come out, come, out. come, come out, out of their mouth into the abyss in Jesus' name. The come blood on. is against you, Satan. 
The blood is against mm. you, Satan. Come out Mom. now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. name, we come against every unclean spirit of incubus and succubus. Yes. Yeah. Every um, spirit that visits during the night that pretends oh, to be a yeah. spouse right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. I commend every demon that takes the form of a sexual partner in the sleep come in on. the name of Jesus Christ to come up mm. and out right now and to leave your body, to leave your life in Jesus' mighty name. Every demon of pornography, in mm. the name of Jesus mm. Christ, we command you to leave right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. Every unclean spirit that brings tormenting dreams, sinful imaginations, flashbacks, sexualized memories, all kinds of wandering eyes, ungodly flirtation, in the name of yeah. Jesus Christ, come up and oh. out right now in Jesus' name. Oh Every God. demon that came through prostitution, that came through come visiting on. strip clubs, in the mm. name of Jesus Christ, come out right now. Every demon that came through television, magazines, videos, or internet, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come up and out in Jesus' mighty name. Every yeah. demon that came through soul ties, mm. in the name of Jesus, yeah. come out right now. Holy Ghost, fire in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus. Every unclean spirit that came through that generational bloodline, where everyone in the family committed to adultery everyone in the family lived sexually immoral life right now that unclean spirit come on your time has expired you need Expired. to leave right now in jesus mighty name come up and out right now leave right now just take a deep breath right now just breathe it out whatever thing you need yes. to do breathe it out vomit it out yell it out but it, it needs to come out yes that thing has lived too mm. long already it is your day of freedom it is your night of freedom god has called and set this time today so that your life can be set free in jesus mighty name we commend mm. every unclean spirit also and every agent of satan that seeks to instill false mm. shame false yeah. guilt false condemnation self on, yes. shame and hatred of your body in the name of jesus christ we break that right now and command it to come out in jesus mighty name we break all curses related to false attempts to purify yourself through mm. your own means right now we break that in the name of jesus christ be free in jesus name Thank you, Lord. What a powerful, powerful time tonight, guys. I know we're over two hours here. I would love, before we um, close out, and I'll do my little close out without you guys on here, but Mike, will you talk just really quick? There's 6,500 people here of the movie. Wow. Just give us a brief overview of the movie, and then I want to play. It's only two minutes. I want to play the trailer to the movie and then post the links to get tickets. Uh, we are all a part of a full-length movie in lots of theaters, October 24th. Mike, tell, Pastor Mike, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, everyone watching right now, imagine what just happened, happening in movie theaters across America from the West Coast to the East Coast. That's what's happening October 24th. And I need you to understand this is an unprecedented opportunity, which means this just doesn't happen. This is a documentary about the movements that are happening in the earth right now, the revivals that are taking place. And I, it basically just shows all these people that God are, is using to do amazing things. So, But here's the thing. I want you to think about your unsaved loved ones. They may not go to church, but they'll go to the movies. Mm -hmm. And I want you to think about your children that, you know, maybe they do go to church with you, but they're not responding to what they see. I truly believe that multiple generations of your family are going to be saved through this film. I wow. believe that they're going to sit there in the theater, have an encounter with God. We're going to see deliverances again. We're going to see medically verifiable miracles. We're going to see cancellations of suicides, which is a big part of the film. We're going to see people surrendering drugs and paraphernalia. It, it, I mean, it really is going to be massive. But here, the big thing, and then we'll show the trailer. Sometimes people wait to the last minute, and I get it. But Hollywood does not work that way. The only reason why they're even giving me this chance is because all these other big Christian films made a lot of money. And so they're looking at it from dollar signs. Mm -hmm. So no, we don't pay for salvation. We don't pay for healing. We don't pay for deliverance. Christ already paid for that on the cross. But w when you buy a ticket and you buy tickets for your family, what you're telling Hollywood is... Um, this this matters. We need to open up more theaters. Like I said, we got the word that AMC and Regal, over 400 new theaters were added just today. My and so God. as of right now, the only showing is going to be October 24th. Now, 
we hope that there's more after that, but we can't act like that's going to happen. So there has to be an urgency. Everybody's saying, I want revival, re revival. Revival is inconvenient. Revival is going to cost you time and energy. Revival is going to cost you to have to cancel your plan. So October 24th, I want you to find a theater where you live, and I want you to load it up. And then what's going to happen as soon as, okay, I got, I'm just going to say this because we got so many people online right now. I asked permission. I said, I don't even want the credits to roll. I want the last scene of the movie to hit. And it goes right into the live stream where me and my worship team are leading a whole process of deliverance and freedom. And, and I said, then we can roll the credits after. And they actually agreed. Come so, on. I mean, like, come on. Crazy. So what's going to happen is this movie's going to play. The last scene's going to hit, then boom, the live stream starts all across America. And we're going to, I mean, it's going to, we're going to wreck the devil's oh. kingdom together. So you got to represent. So come on. I put, I've been putting the link to the tickets on all of our chat. So on every one of our pages, I've put the links to the tickets. It's fathomevents.com slash events slash the domino revival. If you just, Google the Domino Revival. I don't know why, Pastor Mike, people are having a struggle with the name of the movie. It's the Domino Revival. It's very, very simple to remember. If you type in the Domino yeah. Revival, you can get tickets. I'm going to play you guys a trailer. Then we're going to come back, talk about just a couple more minutes, and then I'll close out. So let's, everybody, if you're listening to audio, put your eyes to the screen because we're going to play the trailer in three, two, one. Here we go. The Bible isn't the story of what happened. It's the story of what always happens. Society is attempting to redefine right and wrong. God's people are being faced with the decision. Do I bow in fear or stand for truth? It might look like it's dark. It might look like it's impossible. But I say I serve a God who deals in the impossible. Nothing is too hard for him. At his words, demons tremble. The pastors already think I'm crazy, so I don't have anything to prove to anyone anymore. The doctors told you you'd always be on medication. The surgeons told you there's no procedure. You need a physical healing in your body, but I want to give you the healer, not just the healing. This is about the gospel. The reality of God should change everything about our life and the world around us. There were moments where I would cry, and I'd say, Lord, what am I doing wrong? The power went off, and about seven people ran forward with knives. When I was making all these TikTok videos, no one had any idea that I almost lost my life. I thought this is legit. Is it legit? What are we going to even do? Our nation and the nations are in revival right now, and what we do is really important. We can, like, quench this thing out really quickly. I'm putting on the boxing gloves, and I'm going out and going to war against every unclean spirit. Devil, you might have power, but I've been given all power. You are empowered by Jesus Christ. We've worked with close to 5,000 churches. Pastor Mike, you are the fastest growing church in America. God is literally doing something here that we have never seen happen before. God preserves a remnant to bring a revival. We need the glory of the King. I will pay whatever cost I have to pay because I will not give that which cost me nothing! There it is, ladies and gentlemen, the Domino Revival. Whoo, I'm fired. Oh. Watching that trailer, oh, it makes me fired up. I feel like I could jump out my window and fly away. That was just super, super good. I love it. Um, we also have books coming out. Pagani, Vlad, you both have a book coming out. You guys want to talk about that? Okay, so September 5th, you guys could go get the part two to the Secrets of Deliverance called The Secrets to Generational Curses. So all you got to do is go to www 
booksbyalexanderpagani.com and you'll be able to pre-order it. The other thing I want to share is this, guys. I'm at 99,300. Help me crack that 100K. Those of you that are watching, if you blessed, Come subscribe on. to our channel and stay tuned. It Connect with us and everything that we're doing. Subscribe to us tonight and go get that book. The link's in the description. Out. The links for all the channels are in the description. Now, say the name of the book one more time. The chat's asking. The Secrets to Generational Curses. See, so guys, you can get this on his website, books by, you said books by Alexander Pagani.com? Um, yes, okay, books by books. Alexander Pagani.com. Books by Alexander Pagani.com, or you can get it on Amazon. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, the best best thing you can do for these guys, I'm pretending that I'm an author. I have no clue what I'm talking about. But the best <laughs> thing you guys can do for them, for the guys that have books, unlike me, is leave an Amazon review. If you put five stars and leave a review, it boosts it on that. I do know this. It boosts it on the Amazon algorithm. It'll get more recommended higher up on the search. So, guys, make sure you leave a review. And so, that's uh, Secrets to Generational Curses, books by Alexander Pagani.com. Vlad, tell us about your book coming out. So um, I think a week after uh, Pagani's, everybody go and get Pagani's. And after you're done, um, host the Holy Ghost. It's been Come about on. three years that I've been um, writing uh, this and just kind of preparing for it. It's my journey of when the Holy Spirit became real to me and how that changed the ministry and really kind of launched me into a lot of the things that people see that today. Most people see the deliverance component, but... Uh, personally, in my experience, it's been the relationship with the Holy Spirit that kind of changed a lot of things uh, in my life. And so the book is going to be available in September. Host the Holy Ghost.com or PastorVlad.org. You can pre order it and um, it will come out right away in Russian, in Spanish, and in an audible form. So I'm really excited for it. I think this is going to really cause a lot of people to have a real different relationship with the Holy Spirit instead of Holy Spirit being like a force. Um, he will really become a someone like a person to them, like the Bible describes, and they can develop fellowship, communion with him and walk in his power. So I believe it's going to be life changing. It's written in a very, I put the cookies on the bottom shelf. And so um, <laughs> it's complex uh, topics, but they're written in a very simple and also use a lot of personal stories and illustrations that really kind of drive the point home. But I really believe that there's a powerful anointing on this book and um yeah it's just post the holy today. ghost guys get the books Whoa. so we have apostle bagani has the secrets of generational curses mike has a full length movie coming out in thousands of theaters october 24th vlad has host the holy ghost coming out and i'm going camping next weekend again so guys make sure that you're a part of everything <laughs> going on my book will be coming out it's okay to laugh guys my book will be coming out in 2042 and uh that will be don't you can pre-order that in 2035 you can leave reviews 2036 it's going to be coming out in about 20 years my kids will all be in college i i plan to when my youngest is in college i'll release my book so you guys don't want to miss that is there anything else before i get you guys off and then i have everybody uh donate to the stream that you guys wanted to announce <laughs> No, I'm good. I just want to guy. I want to get your book, man. That's Isaiah. That's just so <laughs> Dude, your grandkids <laughs> could do the forward on it. If you don't mind, your grandkids could write the forward for my book. That'd be awesome. Oh, you're amazing. Charisma's probably mad right now because they're like, "You need to write a book. We're gonna, we're gonna have it soon." All right, guys, I'm gonna do the um the giving port portion. Anything else before I sign you guys off? Go to bed, Mike. It's 4 a.m. for you. I know. I'm fading already. I don't know if you could tell like slowly. It's been fun, man. All right. Love you guys. We'll talk soon.